Hi guys, this is gsmdom.com and I'm here with the Huawei P10 Lite for a review. We have already reviewed the Huawei P10 and the P10 Plus and now we have the follow-up to the successful P9 Lite. So this handset debuted in March this year and it's a mid-range phone that combines glass and metal for the pretty good-looking experience. You can find it on Amazon priced at around $320 and it's available in black, blue, white or gold. It's the rival of the Samsung Galaxy A5 2017 and the Asus Zenfone 3 and also it can even compete with the Huawei Nova handsets. Now, the predecessor, the P9 Lite, had a polycarbonate back, this one has a glass back, glass front and between them a metal frame. Uh, the handset is quite good looking, however it's not as curved as the Huawei Honor 8 Lite, for example, also known as the P9 Lite 2017. Now, on the sides, you can see here, there's a, only a slight curvature also present at the corners but in general quite an angular format now measurements 7.2 millimeters in thickness and 146 grams although it feels very very light as a comparison the p10 is 7 millimeters thick so this is only 0.2 millimeters thicker and it's also 145 grams so only one gram heavier than the p10 compared to the predecessor it's 0.3 millimeters slimmer and one gram lighter this handset is not very wide compared to the Honor 8 Lite, so one hand usage is a ball, no problem here. And we also have comfy buttons here on the side, no problem whatsoever. Luckily, the unit we tested is not a fingerprint magnet, perhaps because it's the gold version. In the end, it feels like a very light, uh, sturdy phone and also beautifully designed for a mid-range 300 buck handset. Now, as far as the screen is concerned, this is a 5.2 incher with a Full HD IPS LCD panel and with 1.21mm bezels. It's got a contrast of 1500 to 1 and we use the videos app to put the um, screen to the test. Now let's see our typical video sample and here is the experience. Now we have a pop-up play feature, we got the speed functionality here you can increase the speed and enhance the audio but we are here to analyze the visual experience so let's see what we're getting we get some realistic colors a pretty okay brightness solid contrast and the view angles seem pretty fine at least horizontally however vertically you will notice they're not very impressive so that's the phone in standard manner and if you tilt it a bit vertically you will lose sight so not very good vertical angles but good horizontal angles now we also did a bunch of tests on this screen and let's see what came out of that experience okay so under the microscope we have rgb stripes pixel setup and we also measure the brightness achieving a variety of results with the best one being 386 lux units which is i would say acceptable for a mid-range phone it surpasses the huawei p8 Lite and the lg g5 but scores below the huawei p9 Lite from last year and the p9 Lite from 2017 and also the huawei p10 now if you want the special settings and options for the screen, we've got them here, there's wallpaper, font size, okay, so wallpaper font size, there's eye comfort, so you can remove the blue light and have your eyes comfier so you can sleep better, also with a color temperature slider, uh, sleep, auto rotate and increase sunlight readability. Uh, the color temperature can be set up from here, so you can tweak the hues however you want, I recommend you leave it on default because that's the ideal settings. Overall a pretty solid screen, although a little bit extra brightness wouldn't hurt anybody and also better vertical angles. Now we're off to other components like for example the CPU, we're getting here a Huawei Mate processor, the Octa-Core Kirin 658 and the Mali T830 MP2 GPU, there's also 3 or 4 GB of RAM depending on the version you buy and 32 GB of storage plus a micro SD card slot. The handset does not suffer from lag, no many how many apps, no matter how many apps you have open, it will never run into problems if you have, I don't know, photo editing apps and want to do some browsing then play a game Game, you will not run into delay or lag, I can promise you that, even though it's a mid-range phone. We also did some gaming here with our typical benchmark game, which is Riptide GP Renegade. Okay, restore. Okay, I want to do this. Let's turn down the volume a bit because that was pretty loud. And we go here, quick race, continue, and here we go. You can tell from the loading screen that uh, the device is quite powerful, although you'll see in the benchmark that the GPU is not exactly top-notch, responsive control, good-looking water, 
nice reflection lighting and everything you want is here let's do a trick we should see some water drops on the screen and yes indeed it's fluid i like the frame rate and for a 300 dollar phone it's doing fine now let's see what the benchmarks tell us if they tell us a different story or the same one we got the screenshots here we did the usual battery of tests like quadrant and tutu and you know the rest let's find them okay so here we are this is Quadrant, good old Quadrant. And here we surpass the uh, Asus Zenfone Zoom and Xperia Z3, but score below the Let TV One S and the Motorola Moto M. Now in Antutu 6, one of the most important benchmarks out there, we had this score here, which is detailed here. And this one places us above the Huawei P9 Lite 2017 and also above the Motorola Moto M, but below the Motorola Moto Z Play. Now we also did a 3D Mark iStorm Animated, not a very impressive result, but at least we beat the Sony Xperia XA. So the GPU not exactly the best of the best, but still good. Uh, it also places uh, somehow below the uh, Huawei P9 Lite. So as I said before, not the best GPU, but the game looked fine, you saw that before. And another thing worth mentioning, we also did Geekbench 4. It should be here somewhere. Okay, so we did Geekbench 4 and in this test we were able to beat the Asus Zenfone 3 and the Huawei Nova and that's no small feat. With the benchmarks checking out ok and even beating some Samsung Galaxy A phones, it's time to go to the temperature test because we also did that and here we achieved 38.9 degrees Celsius after playing the game you saw before, ripped at GP Renegade and when we ran GFX Bench we achieved 34.8 degrees Celsius so there's no overheating here. Now the battery inside this phone is I would say typical for a Huawei phone of this diagonal size, 3000 mAh and also promises fast charging. Now let's see what it deliver, excuse me, delivers in our HD video playback test and here we go. So we achieved the time of 12 hours of continuous HD video playback, that's basically one Netflix season. It beats the iPhone 6 and it also scores below the Huawei P9 Lite 2017 and the iPhone SE but still pretty good result and talking about 12 hours of continuous video watching. Now the PC Mark test, it's continuous usage and it's 7 hours and 10 minutes which is rather ok, at least it surpasses the HTC 10 and the Huawei Honor 8. Still it's below the Huawei P9 Lite 2017 and the Lenovo Vibe X3. The charging is done uh, in uh, 2 hours and 24 minutes, I'm talking about the full charge, but with 1 hour of charge you are already at 79%, so that's impressive. And it also beats the Sony Xperia X Compact. Now of course, the battery has its very own settings. We got power saving mode and ultra power saving, we got power intensive apps, low resolution power saving, a one button optimized feature and also Wi-Fi on during sleep and the option to close accessory power intensive apps. If you look back at the review of the Huawei P9 Lite from last year, this is certainly an upgrade in the battery area. Now as far as the acoustics are concerned, it's pretty logical, we only have one speaker here at the bottom and the SWS option is mentioned here in the player. We got a bunch of songs here, so let's listen to them. This is the SWS option. Okay, some conclusions, the volume is rather okay, I wouldn't say it's hugely loud, just okay. The bass was quite fine, there's no distortion, the back doesn't vibrate and I like the voice and the high notes. Now let's see what our other tests showed. Important things to mention here, we have FM radio and the headphones bundled are exactly the same as we saw on the P10, Mate 8, Mate 9, P8, basically the phones from Huawei for the past years. Now if you want uh, the decibel meter result. We got them here. So in our sample test, there's audio sample test, 86.6 decibels, and in our Riptide GP Renegade, 91.7 decibels. Now these results place us um, below the Sony Xperia XA, but also above the Huawei Mate 8, at least as far as the sample goes. At the same time, you should know that, uh, for example, the Huawei P9 Lite 2017 is louder than this phone, so even at 91 decibels, it can be beaten by the new P9 Lite. As I said before, the same headphones as before, I'm happy with the acoustics, could be just a bit louder. And now let's talk about the cameras. So, the main camera is a singular 12 megapixel shooter with LED flash, face detection autofocus and f2.2 aperture. 
12 megapixels here and 8 megapixels for the selfie. Now if you fire up the camera app, it goes like this, activates reasonably fast, takes fast pictures, has a pretty fluid zoom and also a pretty nice focus, I have to say, for a mid-range phone, focus is quite fast. I would call the options available here rather typical, I'm talking about the photo, pro photo, video, pro video, HDR, time-lapse, watermark, audio note, document scan, panorama, light paint, slow-mo, all focus and you can download more. The pro photo mode includes extras like uh, focus, uh, exposure, shutter, ISO metering and the white balance of course. So these are the main options plus a few other tweaks, we'll leave those behind and let's skip straight to the gallery because boy we have a lot of pictures taken here and let's check them out. So we start during the day, we took daytime shots, it was a very sunny day, it's May after all and the shots we took are bright and clear, the HDR makes things a bit whiter but doesn't exaggerate and uh, frankly speaking I went back to the photos from last year from the Huawei P9 Lite and I found them a bit burnt, it was the summer and now they are less burnt, the colors are more realistic and we also got a bunch of very good close-ups with excellent details. Details aren't only good up close, they're also good in the distance, I have to highlight again just how good these colors are. So if you compare these colors to the one of the Huawei Honor 8 Lite, this one takes more realistic colors and here we started to zoom in onto this flower, so zoom level 1, zoom level 2, nope, just a selfie, so that's the actual distance and that's zoom level 1 and that's zoom level 2 and we didn't lose too many details here as you can see by checking out the pebbles. Okay, so selfies are a bit underwhelming. Um, somehow the background was okay but the texture of my face and the skin does not feel natural, it's too white, it's paper white, it does not feel like human skin, it's slightly blurry and I had a bit higher expectations in that area. Now, the focus here is very good, uh, we have the all focus to play with, if you want to focus on the background or the foreground you can do that. So all focus, as you can see I'm refocusing easily, no bokeh and no gimmicks. So I'm pretty happy with the daytime capture as you can tell, bunch of colorful shots here as well. I'm happy with the exposure, the lighting, the colors, the focus, everything but the selfies. Even the details are okay and here we have a very nice texture of this metallic object engraved onto a toy. Now the panorama has a resolution of 9984 over 2304, it's also quite good and loving the texture, loving everything and I have to say that the hue of green that we caught with this camera is actually better than the hue of green caught with the Huawei P10 Plus that had a bit of a problem with the green hues. Now overall I have to say that this can easily fight the Asus Zenfone 3 and the Huawei Nova even and it surpasses slightly the Huawei P9 Lite 2017 in the area of colors. Now that's day, we also have the night here, so these are low light shots. It's well after 12 am and uh, I'm happy with the flash, the quality of the flash and uh, the light, the colors, the textures are okay. The main drawback of low light capture is the size of the light sources. As you can see the street light halos are very enlarged here, they're crossing lines all over the place and this may influence the quality of the image. It's too bad because I'm happy with the lighting, the colors and the texture of the tiles, everything checks out fine but those annoying lights will bum you out from the whole experience. In the end, if you go back to the P9 light, the P10 light is superior during the night and of course if you zoom in there is some detail loss but it's still a $300 phone so what do you want from that? If you can ignore the street light halos and their lights, everything is okay. Still it's below the Asus Zenfone 3 if you really want a comparison. Now time to discuss the uh, video. Okay, so we shot MP4 Full HD 29 frames per second and 17 mega per second and my first impression was that the clip was rather burnt. Yes, it was a sunny day, but still this red is unnaturally red and some of these greens are totally burnt. If you zoom in, you will lose details, the microphone does not seem to handle the wind very well. In general I was happy with the details but if you look closely and try to spot the leaves of a tree you'll see they're not that clear. One more shot here. We also tried out the electronic stabilization, not very impressive I have to say. And this green is unnaturally almost cyan, so a bit oversaturated. 
When there is no wind, you can clearly hear the kids screaming and playing. We also did a slow motion test and an optical stabilization test and for a mid-ranger I would say it did fine, aside from the colors and a bit of shakiness. Of course, no optical stabilization, but still, look at the iPhone 6 and 6S, uh, they didn't have optical stabilization, and still the electronic one was quite fine. If you look at the P9 Lite, well, the filming is pretty similar from those two, not much of an evolution. Now, during the night time, let's see how we did. So that's a night time video. And as you can see, it's a bit yellowish, but the clarity is good. At least those halos aren't huge anymore, at least in this shot. There is detail loss when zooming in. And the clarity and microphone are fine. A bit of object tracking happened here, since we were watching a car pass by. So I would say that for a mid-range phone, it handles filming at the night, during the night, pretty okay and actually a bit better than the predecessor. Now with the camera done and dusty, there is one conclusion, it surpasses the predecessor and in some areas like the colors, it can even fight the P10 Plus and its greenish problems. Now uh, as far as the web browser is concerned, we got pre-installed Chrome and we are using SwiftKey as a keyboard with a swipe available and a special numeric row at the top. Here we go, this is our website gsnom.com, loading reasonably fast and we also had, let's say, medium level results in Velamo and SunSpider, which are browser based benchmarks. That's the browsing and now it's time to get to the connectivity. Now as far as connectivity goes, let me start off with the obvious, so we have a micro USB 2.0 port here and this is a dual SIM phone that comes with 4G LTE support, there's a GPS and GLONASS, we have NFC, Wi-Fi BGN, Bluetooth 4.1 and nano SIM card slots with up to 300 mega per second downloads. Now if you want to go to the dialer, here we are and options include harassment filter, settings, we have a speed dial and we also have a pocket mode. Now the actual calls are pretty loud and clear. Clear, I like the microphone and the signal, they never let me down. Speaking of things that never let me down, uh, we also have the speed test with quite impressive results. So we achieved a top value of 100 mega per second download in 4G, 25 mega per second upload and on Wi-Fi 224 over 25 mega per second. So that's quite impressive no matter what your claims are, no matter how powerful the web is in your country. Now, as far as the software is concerned, yes, we reached that area and we are running on Android Nougat covered up with Emotion UI 5.1. You've seen it all over Huawei P10 and P10 Plus, it's merely a quick recap, so carousel for multitasking, drop down area with wide notifications and also a beautiful black area for the quick settings with blue toggles which take me back a bit to the Galaxy Note 7 and iOS 10. If you keep the home screen pressed, you can trigger the wallpapers, widgets, transitions and settings and the widgets are, let's say, quite typical, not very far from the stock experience. That's basically it here, we have a pretty sober UI, no gloss, no glitz, no funky stuff. You can opt for the standard version of the UI or one with an app drawer, it's in the settings after all. Speaking of settings, we have connectivity options, home screen style, notification and status bar, navigation key, they can be tweaked. Fingerprint ID, screen lock, security, smart assistance, we got a floating dock, motion control, even knuckle gestures, so you can use your knuckle to take a screenshot or things like that, split the screen in two, in two or draw a letter for an app, and more stuff, you can find it here, voice control, one hand UI, touch disable mode, uh, do not disturb again, app twin, and more stuff over here, including a simple mode for the, let's say, the elderly. Now the fingerprint scanner at the back has multiple purposes. You can take a photo, answer a call, even browse photos. And let's do some fingerprint management. I'm going to show you the setup. It's pretty fast. It requires five steps or so. Unlock the screen, enroll, one, two, three, four, five, six, and upper edge side edge keep the finger still okay so about seven eight steps and it's done let's see just how accurate it is so the phone is in standby now putting my finger here and voila it's fast but maybe not exactly as fast as on a flagship it's like a millisecond slower you cannot feel it but a person who tested hundreds of phones will feel it basically no problem with the fingerprint scanner now you see we have a lot of apps here 
the most useful one being this one. I counted them all, there are 53 pre-installed apps here and we have the phone manager with the virus scan, teams, music, videos, high game, health, calendar, notepad, email and a bunch of tools, more or less useful and a bunch of games, apps included and luckily you can uninstall them if you want so if I want to uninstall maybe Asphalt Nitro. I can do that here and you can get rid of some of the bloatware. This is it in a nutshell, this has been the review and presentation of the Huawei P10 Lite. It's time for the verdict folks, so on the pro side we got a pretty looking phone, a good display when it comes to the white hue, I've seen other phones that, have, uh, that are uh, yellowish when it comes to the hue of the screen. The camera is rather ok for a mid-ranger, in some areas it's better even than the P10 Plus. Emotion UI 5.1 is certainly nice to have, it's the latest after all. Good performance and connectivity, a pretty solid battery, one full season of Netflix can be watched and good acoustics, those are the pros. Now on the con side, well, the selfies could be better, the vertical view angle should also be a bit better, the phone could be slightly but only slightly cheaper, that's my view of it. Uh, if you look at the Huawei Honor 8 Lite, that one is cheaper than this one and offers some extras, believe it or not. Anyway, um, there's some burn in the videos which you saw and finally, maybe a gimmick but the phone is not waterproof and nowadays that may be a deal breaker for some people. In the end, looking back at the Huawei P9 Lite, the P10 Lite feels like an upgrade, clearly an upgrade, I would even say that it's a bigger upgrade from the P9 Lite to the P10 Lite than from the P8 Lite to the P9 Lite. It's got a better screen, it's got better performance and it doesn't have any major deal breaker. Plus, it's pretty looking and I like the battery, the performance and the camera quite a bit. This has been it from gsnl.com, review and presentation of the Huawei P10 Lite, a very solid Asus Zenfone 3 rifle. Bye bye!